Hello everyone, welcome back. Just like I promised, this video is about how to do the biological molecule tests um, in paper three. Now, like I mentioned in my video on food tests and dilutions in paper three, paper three requires you to be able to do food tests, to be able to do um, experiments on enzymes and answer questions related to those, and also to be able to do biological drawings, which is a fixed part of paper three. You can't escape it. So what changes is either food tests or enzymes. For paper three like i said you have two hours and it's one hour per question so if by any chance you get biological molecules you will have one hour to do biological molecules and another hour to do the biological drawings test so um be make sure that you're able to manage your time and i'll give you some tips at the end of this video on how to do that if you had if you end up having a biological molecules test what i am noticing these days is that the biological molecules test is often combined with serial dilutions or simple dilutions so make sure you brush up on your dilutions um, and how to do those if you are going to excel in this part of the test and obviously for biological drawings make sure you check out the tips that i put up um, on the chapter 7's playlist in order for you to be able to do that so let's get into this in this video i will explain how to do the different biological molecules tests and also sort of explain um give you tips rather on how to do all of them if you have if you're required to do all of them at once in a test so let's have a look so the tests that you're typically required to be able to do are carbohydrates that's reducing and non-reducing sugars. You're also required to be able to do the test for starch, which I think everybody knows because it's just iodine, uh, but we'll get into that. Um, you have to be able to test for proteins as well as test for lipids. Now, typically there haven't been a lot of questions asking students to test for lipids, but I have noticed that in paper one, you might get questions that ask you um, about testing a solution and finding a particular result and then being able to decipher what that result means. So all of these will help you be able to do that or what all of the information I share with you in this video. Okay, so what are the reducing sugars? The reducing sugars include all monosaccharides such as glucose, galactose, those are reducing sugars and fructose. Um, maltose, even though it's a disaccharide, is actually a reducing sugar. And what you used to test for reducing sugars is called the Benedict's reagent. Okay, And all of these will be given to you when you get into the exam. So let's have a look at what you might need here for a reducing sugar test. You will need a Bernstein burner, um, a beaker full of water, a test tube rack, a stopwatch, your Benedict solution, and a thermometer. Um, Typically, all of these again are provided and sometimes if you don't have a Bernstein burner provided for you, your school will provide you with what is called a water bath. And a water bath is basically a large metal container of water that is at a specific temperature. So you can go there to do your experiments. And what do you need to do then? If you have a Bunsen burner, you have to fill your beaker halfway through. This beaker I've put on the slide here is too full. So just a little bit like halfway um, and you put it on the Bunsen burner so that it starts to boil. And something here that's a tip is that if you live in a city that is above sea level, your water will not boil at 100 degrees Celsius. It'll probably boil at maybe 97 or 98. So just take note that once your temp thermometer reaches perhaps 97 or 98 and it is not moving beyond that, your water is already boiling. So don't wait until it's 100 degrees because you might lose time with this experiment. So you have fill your, bucket, your uh, beaker with water, you place it on the Brunson burner and you leave it to boil and you put in um, the thermometer to check obviously what temperature it's at so that you can tell if it's boiling or not and then what you do is that you'll be giving your test solution and you can take your test solution and maybe add one mil so i'm just going to do that drawing here so let's say that is one mil of your test solution and on top of that you can then add i mean to use another color um, one mil of your benedict solution and you take that beaker and you put it into this beaker um, you take that test tube rather and you put the test tube you don't pour the solution into it like this arrow might suggest you take the entire test tube and you put it into the boiling beaker of water and you time it for five minutes and observe the beakers for color change the colors that you're likely to get are these colors here so you can get either a blue color a green color yellow or this orange and you might also even get something that's darker than this which is very close to red what blue suggests is that there is no reducing sugar in your 
test solution. So if you get a blue color, that is a negative result. If you get a green color, it tells you that there is a low concentration of reducing sugars. If you get yellow, it means there's a medium level of concentration. Orange means there's a high concentration. And obviously, the darker the colors gets, the higher the concentration of glucose. Typically, you will be given, if you're given a test like this, you don't have to do one beaker at a time. They might tell you, for example, to check the presence of reducing sugar in like five beakers you need to do all five of them at the same time. So you will do the addition of the test solution into the test tube, test add your um, Benedict solution. So you do that for every single one of them at the same time. And you put every single one of them into the hot water at the same time so that you get your re your results at once. Because if you wait to do it one by one, you are going to lose a lot of time. Remember for this particular question in paper three, you will only have one hour. Okay, with non-reducing sugars, the process is more or less the same, but it is a bit just, there's just an additional step. The most common non-reducing sugar is sucrose. And as you might know, sucrose is a, um, it's a disaccharide. So if you do a direct Benedict test, like the one I just described on sucrose, you will get a negative test result. Okay, and I'll explain why. You have to, first of all, break the glycosidic bond in sucrose in order to release the sugar so that they can then be tested. If you test sucrose directly, so that means if you just take a non-reducing sugar solution, you add your Benedict to it and you boil it, the result is going to come out negative. And the reason for that is there is no way to test for the sugars because they have a glycosidic bond that's holding them together. You have to break that bond using either an enzyme or hydrochloric acid um, to do that. Um, so over here, I should have put a slant there. So either an enzyme or hydrochloric acid. So to do the non-reducing sugar test, you can see that you pretty much have the same um, instruments, but now you have hydrochloric acid or you might have an enzyme. And again, you have to start with filling your beaker with water halfway, put it on the bronzing burner, let it boil, check the temperature with a the thermometer. And then the first thing that you do is that you put your test solution in the test tubes. All right, so we can assume here that maybe you're doing three test tubes. So you put your test solution in the test tubes and um, you add the hydrochloric acid into them. So they'll tell you how many drops of hydrochloric acid or enzyme to add. So you add your hydrochloric acid and after you've done that, you then add the Benedict solution on top of it. Okay. So the Benedict solution is typically the same volume as the test solution that you are testing for. So you add the Benedict solution and then only then do you put it into the beaker of boiling water time it for five minutes and observe it for color change. So again, you will get the same results that look like that. If you do the test directly with just the Benedict solution without breaking the buns first, your results will come out negative, which means that you will get this and you might falsely assume that you don't have any non-reducing sugar when actually you do. The starch test is very easy. You just take your test solutions. You use this towel over here. So this towel is very helpful. And obviously I will explain why it's very helpful. So you say, for example, you're given five different solutions to test and you have a towel like this and you want to check which one of them has starch. First things first is you need to label your solutions. So maybe this is S1, S2, S3 and so on. And all you have to do here is just take a drop of that solution and put it on the towel. All right. So you can put and you label the towel as well. So you label S1, S2, S3. You can write on this towel. It's easy for you to erase. So you put the solutions in the respective wells and then you take a little drop, like just one drop of iodine solution and you drop one drop each in all of those wells whichever one turns blue black which is this color over here on the far right is the one that contains starch if the color stays yellow like this that means that there is no starch in your solution um, and i think this is what the color looks like if there's milk in your solution but basically what you should be looking out for is either this one on the far left or this on the far right so the presence of starch is indicated by um, a blue-black solution. 
The test for proteins is also very easy and very direct. You have your test solutions and you are giving copper sulfate and sodium hydroxide. In some cases, you might have a mixture um, which is called the Biorex reagent. Um, I've seen, like I think I've observed this once, where students only had to use one solution, but most of the time you will be given the two solutions. And all you have to do here is add one mil of your copper sulfate, one mil of sodium hydroxide, to one mil of your test solution. Do not apply any heat to the protein test at all. Just observe the color change after you've added all of these. So you can leave it to stand for a bit and shake it a bit so that you can see the color clearly. And whenever you have a purple color that indicates a positive result, these colors here indicate a negative result. Okay, And obviously that's also negative. So a purple color is indicative of the presence of protein. And obviously if that color becomes a bit darker, like it's a really dark purple, that tells you that the concentration of protein is a lot higher in that solution. The last test that you have to be able to do is the test for lipids. And again, this is also not a very easy test. All you have to do is take ethanol and add it to your test solutions and obviously shake that vigorously. The reason why you use ethanol is ethanol is able to break down um, some of the bonds that you might have in your fatty acids. And then once you've done that, you pour it into uh, uh, it should be another test tube, but I decided to use a beaker. You pour it into water, and if you observe a cloudy result like this one, that tells you that you have lipids in your solution. If the solution remains clear like this, that is a negative result, and that means that there are no lipids. So what are some of the tips that you might need if you're doing a combined biological molecules test? So if you look at some of the past paper three questions, you have questions where they say there are unknown compounds in five of these solutions and we need you to figure out which one has what. Well, the first thing that you should do the moment you encounter a test like that is start boiling the water for the reducing and non-reducing sugar test. Even if you were to walk into the exam and they say, well, you're going to test for glucose, I would suggest that even before you start going through too much detail, just set up your Bunsen burner, put your beaker with water on so that it starts boiling, and then read all the instructions so that you know that you are doing the right thing. The reason I say this is that sometimes the water might take a while to boil, and you don't want that to be what delays you during the test. So make sure you start with boiling the water. If you are doing a combined biological molecules test where you're asked to test for everything, then make sure you conduct the starch test and the protein test while you're waiting for this water to boil. Um, that's because these two are really quick. You don't need to add any um, heat to the solution. You don't need to do anything besides just adding the reagents together and observing a quick color change. So I would say start with those two. And obviously by the time you're done with those two, your water should be boiling. So then you can do the sugar test for reducing and non-reducing. And you can also test for lipids while waiting for the sugar test because after you put the test tube into the hot water, you have to wait for five minutes. And in those five minutes, you can do the lipids test. So that's one of the, those are some of the key tips that I usually share with students when they have to do this. Um, another key tip is that if you are testing for two solutions and you're not sure which one has reducing sugar and which one has non-reducing sugar, my tip is to first of all start with the non-reducing sugar test. The reason I say start with the non-reducing sugar test is that if you simply add Benedict solution and you heat it up, the non-reducing sugar is going to turn, um, sorry, the reducing sugar test, the reducing sugar is going to give you a colored result while the non-reducing sugar will be negative. And then you can do the non-reducing sugar test and you will then be able to see which one of the two turns positive um, so that way you can have your results well done so yeah those are my tips and i hope that you find them helpful i wish you good luck in your paper three and in the upcoming exams have a good time goodbye